But golf, there's a way to make it where a beginner can actually competitively compete against a tour player. Mm -hmm. The game may not look exactly the same, but they can play in the same group. They can have just as much fun. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's the only game you can do that with. I love that. Welcome to Golf Trekking, the essential podcast for the passionate golfer. I'm Ashley Husing, and I'll be your host as we explore the most innovative programs, facilities, and professionals shaping the future of golf. Hi, guys. Ashley Husing. I'm on the road, and we're here in Fountain Valley. Fountain Valley? Fountain Hills. Fountain Hills. That's okay. I was close. That's Fountain right. Hills, Phoenix, uh, with Mike Malaska, the one and only. Yeah. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm so excited. We actually just finished a lesson, so we've been spending the whole afternoon together. He's one of my favorite people. He's so smart with the golf swing, and he just knows how to translate and communicate things. And so today, we're going to talk about translating, communicating to women to bring more women into the game. You know, it's interesting when you say that. Most everybody learns the skills they need to play golf by the time they're four or five. Okay. There's three basic skills, hit, throw, and catch. The most important, obviously, for golf is throw and hit. Yes. So when women come to the game, you know, they're, most of them are intimidated. They maybe haven't played a lot of golf or they haven't played a lot of sports, but they have the instincts. If somebody gets a hold of them and you start with, okay, let's talk about these instincts and let's build on those. And if you don't have them, let's get these instincts because that's going to, turn golf into not so difficult. It's just like, if I take a ball, I get a lot of women that I say, well, throw a ball. I never learned to throw. So guess what we're gonna learn? We're gonna learn to throw. Because that little motion right there <laughs> is a big part of hitting a golf ball and creating speed. So if you break it down and they start where they are in the development cycle, and we'll talk more about how they play the game, then all of a sudden they go, oh, I can do that. And so it's not so intimidating. And they walk out here with people who play or even if they're athletes, they're not quite sure what they do. I think women are more, that, from my experience with them for 50 some odd years teaching, they're a little more concerned about how everything looks. Yes. They wanna be social, they wanna have fun, they don't wanna get in anybody's way, and for sure they don't wanna be talked about when they finish. So they're really worried about that whole thing. Well, if you take that away, and then they're going, oh, okay. Oh, you mean people are okay with that? Well, sure they are. All of a sudden, the whole mystique behind golf and I don't want to play goes away. So a lot of it is just, here's where you are in the learning process. Here's your game when you go play with people. Mm -hmm. And if they don't like it, don't play with them because it doesn't matter. This is about having fun, getting out, enjoying golf, enjoying an athletic experience and challenging yourself and learning something. So, you know, that's where I go with it. And I've done corporate America for so long with a lot of females in corporate America and well, up front, they're intimidated, but as they start to understand, oh, you mean I can do this, I can do that? Well, yeah, you already know how to do this, and then this is your game. This is how you play when you go out. Yeah. So. I love it. This. So, so it's been, <laughs> for me, uh, you know, I mean, people say, well, you don't want to teach women. I go, why not? Why would you not? First of all, they're beautiful. I mean, I mean, now you can't talk about that anymore, but, you know, and second of all, I don't care who it is. I don't care what level of player they are. I can have just as much fun working with a total beginner, male, female, junior, as I do working with a tour player. Okay. It's all about, here's where the person is in the learning curve. And if I can get them better, they're better. So, so it's just the learning curve is different and the, where they are in the game is different. But I have just as much fun working with a total beginner as I do a tour player. You know, because all you're trying to do is get them better than they are. Absolutely. And so I think that's a big misconception. Well, you don't want to work with women or beginners. I said, why not? Yeah. I mean, it's learning basic skills. It's being out here. And golf is, is a, an expression of you through a game. So learning for you to be challenged and express yourself through this game, through another discipline, is just good for you in your life. It doesn't matter who it is or what level they're at. I like it. Okay. So, I mean, I, when you guys, when you do, when they do women's clinics and stuff like that, I mean, I, I just, it really bothers me the way the industry, where they have taken the game. First of all, when you go to a golf course, if you're not a very good player, the tees don't matter. 
right. there's a company out there now that has a, a, a thing it's called 36. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you start on the green and you, you play nine holes and you have to be able to, and those nine holes, you have to be able to break 36. Yes. Once you can shoot 36 or under, then you go to off the green and you chip it on and you putt and you play nine holes. Okay, now can you break 36? Yeah, okay, then you go to pitching. Yeah. That's how the game should be taught. It should be taught from the smallest swings to the biggest. And the game should be played from the, what it, wherever you're, 36 is in your game. So you might be just starting out where you can't break 36 if you go 100 yards off the green. Right. Okay, so start 10 feet off the green, chip it on, putt, go with everybody, that's your game. You might stand on the tee and try to hit one. If you miss it, no big deal. My next shot is 10 feet off the green. Yeah. So now you're in your comfort zone. And I, I can tell you that it doesn't matter. I would 10 times rather play with somebody who's a beginner that keeps up Mm -hmm. than play with a really good player that's slow. Yes. So when people say, I'm intimidated to play with somebody, I say, can you keep up? Yes, I don't care. Right. That's all I care about. Yep. And so I think that's another mystique to take away from women is, oh, what if I get in their way? You're not gonna get in their way. If you understand a couple of basic things, you play the game based on where you are in it, you're gonna have fun, they're gonna have fun, and that's what it's all about. You're probably not gonna try to play the ladies tour, I'm just guessing. And they go, no, I just want to not embarrass myself. Like, okay, yep. I've looked at you. Here's your game. This is how you play the next time you go out. If they don't like the way you're playing, that's their problem. Right. Because that's where you are in the game, and now you can have fun and you want to play again. Yep. That's the key. Yes. The key with women and beginners, once they get out here, is that they don't get intimidated the first time. Right. Because if they come out and it's a horrific experience, the chances that they're coming again, just they don't just go like this, they go like that. Right, and that's not even a golf thing. If you do anything for the first time and it's a bad experience, you're probably not gonna you, do it again. It's gonna take a big push to get you to try it again. Right. So that comes back to where are you, hand-eye coordination Why? where are you in the game of golf? Let's build a game that fits where you're at. Yeah. You play your game while they play their game. Absolutely. This whole thing about the tee locations, we'll move up to the forward tee. Thank you for saying forward tee, by the way, not ladies tee. Well, I get trashed if I do anymore because I'm even, yeah, because if I even say, okay, Ashley, so at a girl, ah, whoops, wrong, whatever, what do they call them? Your pronoun. What, what, wrong pronoun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a girl. Looks like a girl to me. Well, see, I, I'm i old. So, I mean, I'm, I've gotten better at it. But the, this whole pronoun thing, I mean, I, I would do golf schools and I got called into the table at the end of the golf schools because there's this one shapely humanoid type person. Okay. okay. A humanoid. Humanoid. <laughs> pronoun. So she hits. They. The, they hit the ball. And I said, had a girl, great swing, nice shot, good, do it again. Had a girl, that's good. Went back, did that for a day or so. I get called into the table for calling her a girl. I get it to some degree, but you know, at the same time, I don't. Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is and we have to adjust and I get that, but it's sometimes people are, I think a little too sensitive because it, it's yeah. if it's taken out of context and you're really trying to degrade somebody by saying that, I get it. But right. when it's just, when it's hard. A mistake or an error. It's, it's, it's hard not, for me as a yeah. 70 year old guy that grew up in a certain culture to say, to think that, that somehow wrong because there was nothing derogatory about it. Right. But at the same time, I get corporate America, I get where everybody is, and so you kind of have to do what you do. Yeah. Uh, but you know, back to the lay the forward tees. The forward tees on most golf courses for most people who are early to the game are too big. The course is still still too long. Right. Yes, I agree. They should play from maximum 120 or 30 yards in. Yeah. That's their game. Now, if they want to stand on the forward tee and try to hit a longer club, okay, for the injury, but, but their game starts 100 yards from the green. So they tee it up, hit one up there, somewhere by the green, chip it on, go to the next hole. If you get them into the game that way, they go, oh, okay, I can do that. But mm -hmm. if you put me back on those forward tees, they're looking at that. And it's like taking somebody who's a beginner skier and put them on the blue run with big moguls. They go, 
Yeah. And I and me, I've skied all my life. Well, it's the blue run. I mean, that's an easy run. And they're going, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Okay, so even though it's not that difficult for somebody who's pretty good, for the person who's coming to the game, it's intimidating. Yeah. For women, we have to take the intimidation factor out of it so that they go, oh, this is fine, I can try it. Okay, good, I didn't do very, okay, let's go up here. All right, let's see what I can do. All right, let's go to the next hole. Keeping score, eh, it's interesting. What, where, where do you keep score from and why? And right. what are you scoring? Right. If it's strictly, I made a three or a four on this hole, you're probably not gonna have any fun. Yeah. I mean, if I would have judged my career only by score and what I was doing, I'd have shot myself early on. So a lot of times it was more about, did I go through the process right? Did I get my grip? Did I set up to it? Did I do that? Yes, I did it every time. Okay, that was yeah. a good day. I shot whatever, but my process was good. Yeah. So I'm ranking my day to day on my process, not on my score. Right. So I, you tell me what are, I've talked too much now. No, you have not. That's no. not here to get you to talk to well, me. Well, yeah, that's not hard to do. <laughs> it's not hard to get me to talk. That is true. <laughs> but it's because you have so many great things to say that I just, I just love when you start talking. It's okay. <laughs> it's more, it's more, I'm fascinated and passionate with the game of golf and yes. people learning it. I'm also very passionate about people not having to go what I went through. I had a very interesting ride and a very interesting career, and I learned a lot of things because I went through, and I was in, in introduced to a lot of people outside of golf that really helped me understand what a golf swing is and isn't, okay. which I think gave me an insight that most instructors today don't have. I'm not saying they're bad or whatever. There's a lot of great instructors out there, but I have a different approach I learned a lot of things that the average person doesn't. I learned a lot about the human body and how it works, which for me was kind of a, an aha moment mm -hmm. because I went, when I was trying to figure out golf, I, I started out, I was really good. They said I needed lessons. I took lessons, I got worse, which is the typical thing. Yes. <laughs> Changed my instincts, which we were doing with you. We got you back into your instincts. Yes. And you start hitting it better, yes. which is interesting. <laughs> so, but, but anyway, so I kind of, they changed me, I got way off base, I was pretty good, played the tour, played majors, it, but it still wasn't as good as it was when I was, and then I got hurt. I got in, induced to a physical therapist, physiologist, kinesiologist, that helped me start to understand how the human body works. Yeah. Which then I studied golf to see, over the history of golf, what are the things grip, take away, impact, what are the things that have remained constant? Once I saw those, then I said, why did they remain constant? And then you look at the human body and how it works, it becomes obvious that things remain constant because they fit what the human body is designed to do. Yes. And that's when it kind of went, okay. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of methods out there and ideas about creating speed and force that don't fit what the body's designed to do. I'm not saying they can't work, I'm saying, but for the average person, it's damn near impossible for them to figure out how to do it right. and have fun with it. Right. So once I learned that and I saw where I, the road I had gone down, my motivation was I'm gonna help people enjoy the game because it doesn't have to be this hard. It's a stationary ball. I mean, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's sitting still and everybody says, whoa, 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 the ball's sitting still. That's why it's hard because then your brain interacts. I go, well, I played baseball. If I put a ball on a tee, it doesn't make it harder. Right. It's easier on a tee than somebody pitching it at me. Absolutely. So I don't understand when you say the ball's <laughs> still, so it's harder. No, if the ball's still, it's easier. <laughs> and everybody would argue with me. I go, well, tennis, baseball, ping pong, hockey, the freaking pucks moving around, the ball's moving around, you have to hit a moving ball. That's hard. Yes. This one, and it's just sitting there. So if you know some basic things to go back and hit it and hit it fairly solid and up in front of you and have fun, hitting it is just the start. Now you can start to play the game. Yes, so I hope you're enjoying this interview. If you want more with Mike Malaska, I just finished my lesson. Go over to Malaska Golf on YouTube and check out what we just worked on. If you can't hit it, you can't play golf. Everybody says, I play golf. I go, no, you don't. You hit the ball around a field and you add it up. You don't play golf because you don't have enough control of the ball to really play the game. Right. It's not that hard for people to get to that point. But the way we've taught it made it very difficult for anybody to actually play golf. Yeah. They just hit a ball around a field, added it up, 
here's my handicap, here's my score, but they really didn't have control or really understand what they were doing. Right. So my motivation, once I feel like I understood what a swing is, was how many people can I show this to to make it easier for them? Some are gonna like what I say, some will go, nah, that doesn't, and I go, that's fine. You do whatever you wanna do. Yeah. Here's what I found from, I've only taught now, I put some numbers to it. The amount of people I've actually put my hands on in clinics, private lessons, is somewhere between 450 to a half a million people. Oh my gosh. So when people say, I've given over 10,000 lessons, I go, well, good for you. When you start getting up around two, three, four hundred thousand, you then now you're gonna have the right to say, okay, here's what I've learned mm -hmm. over that lifetime of working with people relative to what works and what doesn't. Right. And I find it interesting that the younger generation looks at that and I start talking to them. And I say, Well, look, I, I understand what you're trying to do with them, but here's what's gonna happen. Right. Well, how do you know that? Because I did it. Yeah. I know what it did to me and I know what it's gonna do to them. Yeah. Well, no, it won't. That's like my kids. Don't touch the stove, you're gonna get burned. Don't, don't, don't touch it. Oh God, that burnt. <laughs> okay. And then they touch it again. Yeah. And you're going, oh, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's going to hurt you. So if you do this and this, here's what you're gonna to have to do to make that work. Yeah. Now, do you have a lifetime to learn how to do that? Probably not. No. So relative to the human body, there's a simplification of how the body moves where you can play the game. Yeah. Now there's complicated patterns that might create some more speed or do whatever, but who, who has to learn those? Why? Right. Even the guys that learn them, there's a downside because some of the patterns they use force the body into positions it's not designed to work from. Yeah. So now what do you have? You might have more speed, but you have potential for injury. Yeah. The tour is an injury clinic. These players are blowing up. Right. A lot of that's because they're after speed. Right. And the ball in the club for them hits it so straight anymore that even if they make bad swings, the ball goes pretty good. So it's all about how much more ball speed can I get? Yeah. That's maybe okay for them, but it doesn't work for the average player. I think when we first met, we talked about how the tour is filled with all of these players with just huge imbalances. And yeah, they so, are. so for all of them to say, or for actually the general public to say, oh, I want to do this move that Dustin Johnson does, you know. Well, what's the percentage of the general population of golfers that can put their bodies in, in that his position? position? Yeah. I would say over years of being a physical therapist and a trainer, I'd say less than 2%. Right, right. So, you know, I, when they say that, when they start using models, I go, first of all, who's your model? Yes. It's the tour players. Well, I happen to have, and you've worked with a lot of tour players, they're dysfunctional human beings. Yes. <laughs> they have strength in areas the average person doesn't even know they have muscles. Their, flexi their flexibility and mobility in certain areas is, is dysfunctional. Right. So you're taking a dysfunctional human being and you're using an average of those dysfunctional human beings which means nobody really does it it's an average right and you're saying here's the ideal and then you or whoever walks in there and they say well okay no no at, at this point your hips are not open your, your hips are too open and your shoulders are too much and you don't have enough this and that i'm going relative to who the tour the average right. this i said well once dysfunctional model Two, you're assuming that the person in front of you can actually do it. Yes. Well, see, I think that the art form of, te of teaching is taking somebody with limited mobility, flexibility, and hand-eye coordination and getting them to be able to have fun with the game. Yes. Because okay. all those models don't work. Right. So what are you gonna do when none of the models work? Which is about the case with 90% of the people to some degree who yes. play golf. Yes. And that's where I struggle with where the industry's going is they're trying to put everybody into a, here's the ideal. Now I ask this to happen, it hasn't happened to this point. And you have some pull in the fitness industry and I've talked to a lot of people. So I go to fitness people and I say, look, do you mind that in the background? <laughs> no problem guys, well it's just an interview here. It's her career, I mean, whatever. It's just a little bit of noise. Just a little noise. <laughs> I said, okay, fitness person, biomechanics, kinesiologist, forget the tour players. If you were gonna take the human skeleton, the physiology, the muscles, tendons, and ligaments, put it in a position and have it hit a golf ball, where would the grip, where would the, how, what would be a functional model for a functional skeleton to swing? 
Yeah. It wouldn't look like the tour players, I no. can tell you that. No. Where's that model? Because that model would make more sense to me than using the tour players as a model. Because yeah. now you're taking the human body and its design and you're saying, okay, based on its design, here's the most efficient, effective way for this body to do this activity. Sure. Let's move people closer to that. Yep. That would actually make sense. Nobody's done it yet. Right. I don't understand it. I don't either. I mean, golf is, the, what do they say, like an unmasterable sport. So just like you were saying with uh, Molinari, he, get, he wins the Open, he's at the top of his game, and then he's going to change something. Or any of these players who come out and are just trying to be the best, the best, the best, they're constantly changing, constantly rotating whatever they're working on. And it's it's like, at what point are you are you okay with where you're at and you're satisfied and happy? And how, who who is going to be teaching in that? To, who's going to teach that? No, or, or getting to the point where you come out every day and you go, it's cal calibration. You go, step one, I do this. Yeah. Can I do that? Okay, step two, I do this. Step three, I do this. Step four, I go play, see what happens. Yeah. If I'm off, I go back. So having a clear enough picture of how to build a swing, which yeah. Most people don't know. There isn't a calibration. There's not a step-by-step -step process. Right. I mean, you look at even the, even our words, we don't have a definition of terms. Yeah. So if I, if I say, explain release to me, and I had five teachers here and I had them all write it down, I guarantee you when we looked at all five descriptions, not one of them would be the same. No, they wouldn't. Okay, so now you throw that word out to the general, but we're gonna talk about release today. Oh, what's their definition of it? Right. So we're the only professional industry that doesn't have a definition of terms, which is another reason why it's so there's so much confusion, because words, terms, get behind it. How do you get behind a ball? I mean, that's behind it is behind it. How do you hit it from behind it? You're to the side of it. Shift your weight. No, you're not shifting weight. You tell somebody to shift weight, they sway. Yeah. Then you say, don't sway. You go, wait a minute. You said shift my weight, but don't sway. I, you, you confuse me. Yep. Well, the terms are wrong. Right. So, anyways, <laughs> it's, so we want to simplify, well, but yeah, you the have industry's to, not quite there yet. No, they're not no. because because everybody has to have their own little. Everybody's kind of doing this, which yeah. is what it is. Yep. And that's why I tell people say, well, why have you come up with what you've come up with? Well, it's a it's a lifetime of experiences. I everything I've done, I've learned on myself first. Yeah. I've experienced golf at the high major championships I've played in. I've been in contention. I've, I've understood what that is. I've won tournaments. I know what it's like to be what you call nervous, mm -hmm. have your heart in your throat. By the way, that's a good feeling. That is a good feeling. It's not a bad one. It's not <laughs> nervous. That's called adrenaline. Yes. It's called a high energy state. Yes. So I've been through all that and then I got hurt and then I learned the human body and how it works. And then I, I kind of started putting two plus two together and I could see, okay, if we're gonna do this, there's a real easy way to do this and it's a learning process. Right. It's skill development, just like what we did you today. I didn't start with your full swing. No. We started fixing you with little chip shots and you, and all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, well, I can do that. Yeah. And as you made a bigger swing, that, that incorporated right into it. Yeah. That's how it should be taught from the smallest swing to the biggest one from impact back, not from set up to the top. To, I mean, it's crazy. Positions, not, yeah. you wanna teach movements. Exactly, Right. exactly. So athleticism is about movements, about free motion. Yes. It's not about positions. Positions are effects. Most of the teachers I see are looking at effects. They don't know causes. That's because of cameras and slow motion. We're able to stop things down to a frame and say, look at that position. And I go, okay. So how are you gonna get there? Well, I'm gonna practice that position. But wrong. Yes. Because forces that, that create that position, if you practice that position in slow speeds, it doesn't translate at full speed. Right. It doesn't even come close. Right. So it's just been an interesting career. And when you being here wanting to talk about women, it doesn't have to be that difficult. There's ways to introduce women to the game. Yeah. Where they can have fun with it and they can progress through it. And as they get better, you know, the game progresses with them. Yeah. It's one of the only sports where a total beginner can go out with a tour player, and if they know it, they can both have fun playing in the same group. What a marvelous thing to that have happen. I mean, and they can even be competitive. <laughs> and you're going, how does that work? You can't do that in tennis. 
You can't do, there's no other sport where you can handicap two players playing with each other. Like in tennis, how would you handicap? If I'm a 5-0 and you're a 3-0 tennis player, there's no way we handicap it where I'm not gonna just destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> I can start you out 30 love every game and I'm still gonna beat you. Yeah. So, so there's, but golf, there's a way to make it where a beginner can actually competitively compete against a tour player. Mm -hmm. The game may not look exactly the same, but they can play in the same group. They can have just as much fun. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's the only game you can do that with. I love that. So if you're introducing, if you're um, back to what we were saying, like each kind of pro or, you know, has a bleh, and then a bit, yeah. you know. So if I'm a brand new player and I'm trying to research maybe where I want to take my first lesson or who I want to take a lesson with, what are your suggestions on how they find the right fit for them? Well, first I would say, whatever, whoever you are, whatever level you're at, you find somebody who teaches a lot of the people at that level. Okay, that's great. And then you ask the people, if you can, you find somebody who's taken lessons and you say, how's it going? If they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm really working at it, but I'm not getting much better, go to somebody else. <laughs> because the other thing I've always found interesting is that, oh, if you're gonna take lessons, oh my. Now I bought this, I, believe me, I swallowed this too. Hook, line, and sinker. Mike, I know this is hard right now, but if you do it for another six or eight months and you're really where it's gonna start to feel better. Okay, so I went for six or eight months. I was better at it, but it still felt like crap. Okay, so that whole thing about it should take you a long time to see success, no. No. Then that, that teacher, what they're telling you, yeah, you, you don't learn things overnight, but you should not spend, it shouldn't take you two months and 100,000 balls to get better. Right. You right. should see some progress very quickly. Yeah. If you don't, I wouldn't stay with whatever you're doing for a long time. Sure. You know, so that's the first thing. So you find somebody who teaches who, where you are in the game initially. Yeah. Now, as you go further and further, I think it's important if you want to play, if you're talking about, if it's a female that wants to play in college events and be that kind of player, okay, you want to find somebody who teaches who has done that. Okay. Because unless you've done something, you really, it's, you really can't relate to it. So if, if it. you're trying to play the tour, you probably should find somebody who has played the tour who's now a teacher or a teacher who teaches a lot of tour players. Right. Because otherwise, they're gonna give you information that may or may not translate. Yeah. So well, that's the big thing too, is the communication, right? Exactly. So everything we worked on today, just the way that you speak to me and how I visualize, like our dance, you know, how I visualize it, it's I'm receiving it and I'm understanding it. So. It might not necessarily be a, uh, a you know a bad or an inexperienced instructor or a bad player or a bad learner. There might just be a disconnect in communication there. But uh, no question, that's why I basically use three or four forms of communication with every person. I love that because I never know which one is going to connect with them. So some people are more kinesthetic, some are more visual. You know so. More, some more verbal, it just depends. Basically, we all learn initially by, by copying. So we watch, we copy. That's why your kids do a lot of the same things you, because when they were real small, they watched you and they copied what you do. Yeah. So we are copiers by design. So the first thing is to say, so now watch what I'm doing here, okay? Let me see you copy what I'm doing. That should be the first place everybody starts. Now, if that doesn't translate, then then you start moving into the other forms until you find one that that person triggers with, and then yeah. you then you you start to be able to run through the different forms of communication to figure out what's going to trigger. Sure. And uh, that's the other thing I found over 50, 60 years of doing this is I could make the same presentation I gave you with somebody else and it wouldn't work. I'd have to do it a different way. And if I just do it the way I did it with you. And as soon as we started, I could see what you were relating to. So I went down that road. Now, if I had just kept going a different way, I wasn't sure what you were gonna trigger. But as soon as I saw what was triggering with you, then boom, your first trigger was your bad knee. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how do, we, how do we make it so you can swing and not hurt your knee? That actually had a big impact on your game, on mm -hmm. your full swing. Yeah. All right, so you, you never know what's gonna trigger with somebody. The teachers who have a, 
set, okay, put you on, show your lines, here we are, okay, you're up, you're down, you're too much inside, the face is too shut. Yeah. They're gonna help some, some they're not gonna do much to, some they're gonna kill. Because they don't really, the information yeah. may not fit the illness. Right. See, we're just learning things. I just, I love just sitting here and talking to you. It's just so okay. fascinating. Uh, okay, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, thank you so much for the lesson today. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. So ladies and beginners out there, find a coach or an instructor who teaches what you're the level you're learn, at. the level you're at, and just have fun. And it's okay to start just on the putting green or just off of it. You don't have to be on the forward tees. You can just go out and have fun. It just re relate fun to the golf course, and then you'll want to come back more. Now, I tell people all the time, I say, look, you go out, if, if you want to, if you're played a little bit, you go out, if you hit your driver and you hit it pretty well, okay, and it stops, you should be within a distance where you can hit somewhere between a six, seven iron high rescue to a pitching wedge to the green. Okay. So if that means that you get up to 200 yards from the ferret, from the green, so if you hit your driver pretty good, your cold stuff, you can hit a seven iron, that's your tee. Okay, so you want to be able to, if you hit a good drive, you want to be close enough that you can hit your next shot onto the green yep. fairly easily. You don't want to be having to hit a three wood. Right. That determines your tee location or your distance location as to where your game is. Now, if you're very beginning and your drive goes 100 yards, you better not start more than 150 yards from the green. Yeah. So, so if you do that and you're realistic with yourself, it's like golf's interesting. I used to ski a lot. I taught people to ski. I didn't have one person that was a beginner. You put them on the freaking bunny hill, right? You're learning how to use your skis and learn your edges. They go, oh, this is kind of fun. Okay, get on, let's go up. Black Diamond Run Big Moguls. They, they're going, oh, no way, no way. Get, I'm back on the lift. Okay, let's take the bunny trail down. Okay, here's, I never saw a person that was struggling on the blue run that wanted to go to the double black diamond. No. Well, because they're afraid they're gonna kill themselves. In golf, let me swing hard at one. I go, well, that's a double black diamond run with the big moguls. The problem is there's not enough penalty for not being able to control. Right. Tennis. Ball comes at you too fast, you can't even hit it back. So most sports, either the speed of the ball or the severity of the sport forces you to a pace that you understand. Right. Golf allows anybody at any level to make some kind of violent thrash at it and all of a sudden they impact the ball and they go, oh, that's it, I got it, you got freaking lucky. <laughs> duplicate that three or four times. I can't duplicate it, no, really? So. It's interesting, the game allows people to think they're better than they are. Yes. So if you back them down, they get better. You know, they get this big idea about the game and what it is, well, that isn't your game. And if you try that game, it's like being a skier that's a green diamond run skier and all of a sudden you find yourself on a black diamond run with the big moguls. You're trying to find a way off that hill. Yes. Without hurting yourself. Yes. You're not saying, oh, this is gonna be great, watch this. Yeah. You may try that one time. <laughs> <laughs> or tennis. Okay, serve one at me at 100. Okay. Uh, well, I can't even touch it. Yeah. You want me to serve another one? No. no. Could you slow it down? I can't even see that one. Okay. Ashley, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> Until next time.